under social distancing. Those living with autism already experience difficulties with social interaction and communication. As Sylvia Mora, an events manager and graphic designer, is a mother of three sons. Two of them are autistic and have special needs. For the past 14 days, staying at home has taken a great toll on her family. She opens up about her struggle in the hope that her story will uplift other parents raising autistic children. Sylvia Mora, a graphic design and events consultant, is a proud single mother of three sons, Andrew aged nine and a half, and Bradley aged eight years, two months, have special needs. Andrew has autism, Bradley, her youngest son, has ADHD, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. This causes above normal levels of hyperactive and impulsive behaviors. Come, sit down. <laughs> They have trouble focusing their attention on a single task or sitting still for long periods of time. Children with autism have difficulties communicating and interacting with others. Andrew can hardly look at you in the eye. Sylvia knows too well that it takes a village to raise a child, but it also takes a child with autism to raise the consciousness of the village. At this time of the COVID-19 pandemic, they cannot leave the houses they have always done. The Kenya Community Center for Learning, where Bradley and Andrew learn, is also closed for now. So we've been on lockdown for the past 13 days. It's been hell to say the least, um, because there is the routine. The last thing you want is a special child on that because the immunity is already compromised. One, this, this Sylvia tell us that with their routine disrupted and timelines distorted, the situation is taking a toll on her. She already has two broken toilets. Andrew, a stickler for timing and routine, keeps insisting for more no. watches. Let's go up. The house. Let's go up. Let's go up. Let's go up. She constantly has to find something for them to do. Because they cannot leave the house often, they find solace on the rooftop as a new routine. Even if she has to leave for the supermarket, she has to leave them in the car to maintain social distancing. I choose the one to go out. Do I take them out, risk their lives? Do I keep them in, risk mine? It puts you in a, in a situation where um, it's in a common sense, being realistic and being human. Yeah. The family's supplies are running thin. Sylvia has just enough for a month. With her work severely affected and all her payments being out of pocket, she hopes the situation does not persist. Andrew, he's coming back. Andrew, listen. Andrew, listen, I'm talking to you. The slightest fever or illness can trigger serious convulsions in Andrew. Once he was taken sick, but since he could not communicate, the doctors could not diagnose his condition in good time. Even though he was suited for pneumonia, it had already eaten away at his lung. The drugs he needs for fever are only available with a prescription. At this time, parents raising autistic children are experiencing a shortage in the drugs. The Autism Society of Kenya estimates that one in 88 people has autism and at least one in every 20 children is autistic i'm so afraid of when there'll be total lockdown i will not lie i am so afraid of that time because what what do i do children with autism as other neurodiverse conditions such as down syndrome are very sensitive to their parents anxiety like uh, this situation is making you anxious as a parent deal with the anxiety so that the child does not sense those vibes just to urge parents to be more vigilant during this uh, period because uh, it, it could be it could be very disastrous if a child uh, elopes. At school, their special needs are met. Learning from home is almost impossible without the right resources and without shadow teachers. Sylvia is not able on her own to provide occupational and speech therapy. Explaining what the coronavirus is to them is a tall order. Experts advise that even in a time such as this, parents need to maintain a solid routine, especially for autistic children. Information about COVID-19 through social stories, very simplified stories with very direct and clear language that the, the children can understand. 
very hard for me to invite them into the house to come continue with the classes, right? Because then, of course, then if you say, okay, wear a mask, my child relates that with what? The hospital. Then this is my teacher. Why is my teacher dressed up like this and stuff like that? If you show them gloves, gloves are for the hospital. So it becomes very hard to continue with what it is that they normally do and how they learn. The government often characterizes people living with autism just as people living with disabilities without considering the nuances that distinguish them from other physical disabilities. Sylvia founded Andrew Speaks, a foundation to raise more awareness on autism and to uplift other parents suffering in silence. More learning resources, access to drugs and therapy, she says, will help make raising autistic children easier. He's coming back. Sylvia steals herself to be strong. She has faced a lot of stigma raising her sons, sometimes even from her neighbors. Sometimes there is a screaming. <laughs> the tantrums and the meltdowns, especially when they cannot communicate what they're feeling and experiencing mentally. Like I can't deal with one more problem. I'm just trying to survive. You're lucky you will be able to tell your child, sit down, they will sit down. All the coping mechanisms that I had are no longer there. So it's driving me crazy, but what to do? You're a parent. You have to be there for them. I, I'm, I'm all they have. There is no telling yet just how long this situation will persist. The greatest fear is that they could regress when they go back to school and forget all they have learned. Experts recommend that at the time of social distancing, social interconnectedness is important. They need to maintain conversations through video and phone calls. Sylvia is coping. She is everything to her children. Dorcas Wangira, Citizen TV, Nairobi. You know, Sylvia says she did this not for anything else, but just to encourage the 